All right, uh, in this uh, example, I'm going to basically do a quick walkthrough of the Kyle Microvision environment. Uh, I have the uh, Kyle Microvision 523 uh, installed uh, on this computer. Uh, we've created a project basically for the STM32 uh, F7 uh, Nucleo board on STM32 CubeMX and uh, the project structure was created through QBMX and now we are in Kyle Microvision and the purpose of this video is basically to give you a quick overview of what are the different things, uh, different uh, windows, uh, some features of this particular tool set and how basically to just get started. Okay, so let's get started and uh, in this exercise I'll just quickly show you how we might write a simple uh, GPIO uh, you know, function. We'll use a blue LED that's on the Nucleo board which is at port B pin 7 and we'll also use the blue user button uh, that's on the Nucleo board that is at port C pin 13. So how do I know uh, where this, uh, what functions to use uh, uh, and so forth when I'm using the STM32 HAL libraries uh, once I bring my project into Kyle Microvision. So I've exported my project uh, from QBMX. Here's my Kyle Microvision. There's the overall window. This project structure is right here. Uh, so it has shows me all the source files. My project uh, what, on QBMX was called L2 Exercise 1. So underneath that, it created a number of folders. I asked it to create uh, separate uh, f files for all the peripherals that were in enabled separate .c and .h files so that the main file does not get cluttered. So that's why I see the gpio.c and in this file gpio.c if I open it uh, the only thing that's happening there is basically initialization of uh, certain gpio pins. Okay, that's all it is doing. There is only one function called mx underscore gpio underscore init. So it basically is initializing the general purpose IOs uh, available. Okay, so I'm in main.c now. So here's my main.c. The structure of the code is created by QBMX. Uh, if I need to go change something uh, on the features or enable other features in the processor, I can do that quickly in the QBMX and regenerate the code. When you regenerate the code, you want to make sure if you don't want to lose the code that you manually added, so in other words, if you added some piece of code here, let's say about GPIO, let me just say hell, so let's say you added a, a set uh, hell, let's say delay. I had a delay setup. Uh, why I have this, I don't know, but let's say we had this setup, and I didn't want to lose this when I regenerated the code. Always put your code between these kind of comments where it starts with user code begin, user code end. So there's different different areas uh, where you can add the code. For example, I might add that code in the while loop right here. So if I add it here, this space is okay. This is not okay. So if you see this, this place right here, if I regenerate code from QBMX, uh, this this uh, line that says this space is okay, whatever code I put there will still be valid because it's between uh, user code while, begin, and end while right here. So it'll retain whatever changes you make. If you put it right here, which is not between begin and end of a comment, then next time I generate code, what you'll see is a blank thing happen like that and the code will disappear. Okay, so that's the first thing to think about. Second, let's explore. Now, uh, I don't, let's say I don't recall how to uh, use GPIO. So let's go and explore. So uh, up here, a few things uh, to know. This is the build function. So if I press this, the only thing that gets built or compiled is the latest changes. Uh, so it, it basically just uh, does uh, the latest changes and gives you a message of whether uh, it was successful or not. In this case, it says zero errors, zero warnings so far. We haven't added anything to this code. This is called rebuild all. So it will compile uh, clean and then compile every single file that exists uh, in this library, including all the uh, includes and so forth. So it'll take about a minute uh, for what I have right now. Here is a program to load to Flash. So if I click this, uh, it'll basically uh, program, it says programming done. 
uh, it says programming done right here. A flash has been loaded. Okay, so that's uh, basically loaded the program. In this case, there's nothing at all. So I've, I have a nuclear board connected with a USB uh, to my computer right now, and it's doing nothing anymore. Okay. And by the way, once you download uh, code to Flash, you might notice that nothing is happening. I'll press the black reset button on the nuclear board if that happens. Okay. So you actually do need to uh, press the reset button for your code to start. Okay. Let's go back now here again. Uh, so here are different files. So I want to. So the goal. So I, let me just write down right here under uh, begin three. Okay. Okay. So uh, right here. So I'm going to start right here. Uh, the goal is to blink the blue LED that is in port B pin 7. Okay, I want to figure out how to do that. I don't know what the functions are yet. So let's uh, go here. Click on this tab, uh, functions. Uh, right here it says functions. Click on that. Uh, when you do that, it shows me all the files that are available on the library that uh, got copied over from the QMX project. Uh, I'm going to look through here and see what makes sense. Uh, HAL GPIO. All right, I want to I want to work on an LED blinking. So LED is connected to general purpose I/O. So it makes sense that the functions related to reading or writing to a particular pin might be in here. So let's go explore. So if I click the plus button there, I see all the functions that are in that file, and quickly browsing through them. When I quickly browse through them, I see there is a read pin a toggle pin and a right pin okay let's start with the uh, let's start with the right pin let's see what it does so apparently so here are the comments related to that function uh apparently it returns a void meaning it doesn't return anything uh the hal gpio right pin expects a gpio type called gpio x and here is the de definition of what that is gpio x where x can be a through k so there are port a b c d e f and so forth in the cortex m7 so we know that our led is connected to port b so we will be using gpio b where the x is re gets replaced by a b uh, then it's expecting something called a pin number i know that i need to write to pin number seven and then finally, I want a pin state. And the pin state, it says, is either GPIO pin reset to clear the pin or GPIO pin set to set the port. And then the pin number right here, the second parameter that right here, it says, GPIO underscore pin specifies a port pin to be written. This parameter can be one of GPIO underscore pin underscore X, where X can be between 0 and 15. So if I want to do this function right here okay i can copy that let me just actually start by copying that and placing it here okay so i want port b so this one is should be gpio b i want gpio pin right so it should be gpio underscore pin underscore and i want pin number seven Oh, seven. So here is my pin seven, right? How did I know this? Well, when I go back here to my right pin, it said that the GPIO pin gets a parameter called all caps GPIO underscore pin underscore the number, the pin number. So I have GPIO underscore pin underscore seven. Now the pin state, let's go back again to the right pin command. Uh, it says the pin state can either be reset or set. Reset means turn it off or clear. Set means turn it on. So let's do set first. So I'm going to copy that. GPI underscore pin underscore set. So the pin state is basically that. Okay. All right. So see. So I figured out how to write, write GPIO write pin, GPIO B. GPIO pin 7, GPIO pin set. So I'm saying write to port P pin 7 a value of 1. So the LED should hopefully light up when I do that. Right? So I'm just going to save this for now. If I want to compile this, I just hit build and I will run it. When it's done building, I'll flash it, press the reset button, and I should. Uh, so I should download. 
it's done programming and now when I hit the reset button I actually see the blue light is actually on uh, my uh, nuclear board okay now let's see uh, what I wanted to do originally was flash on off on off on off at a period periodic uh, uh, of let's say one second okay so uh, let's go around and dig for maybe oh, that that not here I want I want the some kind of delay feature so I want a delay feature let's explore in this particular file called hell this has some of the helper functions so when I expand it uh, and this gives me a list of all the functions available there I should see a hell delay right here hell underscore delay so let's double click there it says hell delay this function provides minimum delay in milliseconds based on a variable incremented so I want what I want to say is hal underscore delay and I give the value in terms of delay is basically in terms of milliseconds there so I'm going to copy that and in here I'm going to just paste it and I am going to replace that with let's say one second delay so 1000 okay. now I have delayed it by 1000 great uh, so I have a blue light on I'm asking you to wait for one second and now let me show you another feature of the Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kyle Microvision uh, as you start typing hell underscore you start seeing relevant functions that are available uh, based on the libraries that, that you have let me still go and explore the GPIO so I start typing GPIO underscore let me do right pin so now, as soon as they said W, there's only one function that starts with HAL GPIO and has a W in it. So that's the right pin. I can help it autocomplete by just pressing the space. And then it says HAL right pin. And if I open parentheses, now what the parameters it's expecting all of a sudden shows up on the screen to help me, gu guide me as I uh, go, go ahead. So GPIO underscore pin underscore seven comma gpio underscore pin underscore reset and then I put a closing parentheses and enter and I do a hell underscore delay delay again oops delay and I'll do a 1000 again All right so now if I run this code so if I build and run this code light will blue light will come on wait for one second blue light won't turn off wait for one second and this happens in a loop because I have this on a while loop so if I download this flash uh, unfortunately I don't have a webcam set up to show you the board but if you can trust what I'm saying uh, then uh, when I just press the reset button and now I'm seeing the blue light on one second off one second and so forth so this is uh, this is going on this okay so we did this thing where we're able to write to an LED Great. Now let's do another goal. Let's just basically say goal is to refresh the blue user button and reflect the value of the button press on the blue LED. Okay, that is on port B pin 7. So what I want to do is the blue but find the blue button. Uh, according to the nuclear board data sheet, the blue button, the user button, is on port C pin 13. So I want to write, I'm sorry, I want to read from it. So let's go figure out again under the GPIO module. So GPIO module right here, uh, there's a read pin. So let's go read it. What does it say? Uh, it reads the specified input port pin. GPIO X is the first parameter. GPIO pin is the second parameter. So all it needs is two parameters, the port name and the pin name. It, re it returns a GPIO pin state. So that's the return value. If I want to find out what that return value might be, I can, so by the way, in any function, I can write, so I, I put my cursor on GPIO pin state, right click, and say go to definition of GPIO pin state. Where was it defined? So GPIO pin state is defined as an enum 
type def enum so it basically enumerates meaning a zero when i say gpio pin reset is the same as saying zero and gpio pin set is the same as saying a one okay so all right so what i'm uh, what i'm going to do is on here under gpio so let's go back to the gpio again uh read pin so if i want to read from this i'm just going to copy this first uh into main so what i want to do is every uh, in this loop i want to read from uh hal gpio read pin it uh, so the blue but blue push button user button is in port c gpio c and it is on pin 13 so gpio underscore pin all caps 13. let's put a semicolon right there well it's it's going this is going to be an error uh, what i want is to create a variable call let's say pin value equals right so gpio pin state so just like saying int pin value so gpio pin state because that's what this returns so pin value is the name of the variable in which the state of pin 13 port c is going to be recorded when i call this function okay so that's pin value now what i want to do is write so hal gpio write pin port b Oh, not port B, GPIO B, B, uh, GPIO pin 7, that's the uh, blue LED. Uh, what I want to write is not neither a set or a reset. I actually want to write whatever the value was uh, that was just read by pressing the button. And let's give it a second. So let's do a HAL delay, uh, 1000. All right. So when I do this, let me compile this. Let me compile this. And now what I, what what is going to happen is when I when I download this code, when I download this code onto my board on the nuclear board, uh, I'm going to re first hit reset, and then when I press the blue button, my blue LED will be on. When I release it, my blue LED will go off. In fact, let me uh, set up my webcam real quick and I'll show you the board. Uh, so give me one second. The board ha has the code in it now and I am I have the webcam set up. Uh, I am going to press the reset button. Uh, so the co code was just downloaded onto the board. I press the reset button. Now when I press the blue button, you should see the blue LED come on. So you should see the blue LED right here uh, come on. I release it and the blue LED goes away. I'm going to press the button again light comes on so when i press it port c pin 13 value is being set that value is now being reflected on since i'm holding it down is being reflected on that led when i release it when the code goes through it oops uh, auto focus all right so when the code goes through it and now it's reading the value of this port since I'm not pressing it right now, it's reading it to be a zero, hence the LED is showing uh, uh, an off value.